Hi there and welcome to this video tutorial in the How to Model series. In this video we will be looking at some of the basic tools and materials used in model making. At the end of this tutorial you will know some of the basic tools and materials commonly used in model making, some of the advantages and disadvantages to some of these tools and materials. We we'll begin with tools. This is a steel ruler. It's often used for measuring and as a straight edge or a guide for using our cutting knife. Very important to mind your fingers when you're using a knife in while cutting material for model making. This ruler here, as you can see, has a groove in it for our fingers to sit in and be kept in a safe position. Pencils, these are often used for marking out drawings or writing on materials in which you work on. Always use a sharpened pencil, never ever use a blunt pencil. It's not accurate enough. T squares and set squares, you might see some of these from Technical Graphics or DCG. They're used for marking out or completing working drawings plans for our models. Self-healing cutting mats. These are used for cutting materials on. Never cut a material or a piece of card or something along those lines on, directly on your table top, top. This will ruin the working surface of the tabletop. Some glues now. There's usually three types of glue used in model making. As shown here is a hot melt type glue. It's very good for gluing parts quickly or materials together. It can be very messy and can burn you if it gets in contact with your skin. Other types of glues are the likes of your Pritt stick, a dry glue. It takes time to set but the bond is not very strong. It's not too messy to use and it's very easy to use so it has its uses. Some of the more common wet types of glue then are the likes of our Loctite or our premium wool adhesive glues. These take time to set but the bond is very strong compared to that of dry glue. They can be very messy and can tend to run or drip as well. Protective gloves, always handy to have near you. They protect your skin and important to read the labels on some of the materials you, you will be using in modeling because some of the materials contain harmful substances which can, which can harm you. Personal protective equipment, PPE, always use where needed, the likes of our safe glasses, overalls and our dust masks. Always use these. They protect your eyes, your breathing and protect your clothes. It's important to read the labels on some materials because again they can be hazardous to you. Tapes. Some very handy tapes to use in model making. Masking tape, double sided tape, for used for holding material whilst gluing or covering materials that you don't want to get paint on or glue on. Pliers, two very handy pliers to have near as well. A long nose pliers to pick away glue or to aid you holding or picking up very very small materials or elements of your model. And a snips to cut the wire, often used in model making. These are just an insight to some of the basic tools, there are many more. Materials. Materials typically come in cheap form for model making. You can slice and cut them in different ways to best suit your model. We will discuss the most common available. This is the likes of foam core. It's also known as kappa board. The advantages of foam core it is that it has nice, it has it has a thickness already. It's not as thin as say the likes of paper or card. Um, some of the disadvantages with it, it can be quite expensive for an A3 sheet. You could expect to pay about 8, maybe 9 euros for this. It doesn't take finishes very well. If it takes glue or any form of wet paint or a wet finish, it tends to warp. Poster board can be very crafty and very easy cut. It's very useful to use for, say, models you might build that have might have a curved or bent section in it. It comes in a range of colors, which is also very handy, and it's quite cheap. Chipboard or cardboard. Cardboard is also known as model make. Or chipboard is also known as model making card. Now this can be quite expensive again for an A3 sheet. You might pay about two euros for. But then we have the likes of cardboard, which is a waste material most of the time and is very very handy for model making as well. Uh, modeling foam. It's for use for modeling bigger structures or more intricate structures, like say the stone wall that is shown here in the image. Uh, it is quite expensive again, but it is very easy to work with. It's a dense type of foam, so it shapes very well and takes a finish very well also. Insulation board is similar to our modeling foam as seen in the previous slide, but it can be used for modeling bigger structures. Uh, you can often get this on building sites or waste material as well, which is also very handy. So it's an advantage when you get it for free, it's cheap that way. Wood, this can be quite expensive, um, but really when you use wood, you don't really have to finish it. So it's advantageous from that way. Uh, it shapes very well, but the bigger 
the material of wood, the bigger the size of wood you use, the more you're kind of talking about not cutting with saws anymore and say cutting with the likes of bandsaw. So not everyone is allowed to use a bandsaw in the school. Sawdust. I recommend you keep it. Keep every little bit of sawdust that you can get your hands on. We have to make as much use of waste material as we can. In a video tutorial at a later stage, I will show you how to model grass from sawdust for absolutely free. Wire, model making wire. Make use of this waste material as well. Oftentimes we get insulation, insulated cables that get thrown out of houses that are getting refurbished or whatever, or you might find them lying around the school. Uh, my advice would be keep on, keep a hold on to the, some of this wire because it's very handy for supporting some parts of your model. Acetate or plastics. Acetate or plastics come in a range of colors. Some are harder to cut than others. Say the likes of acetate can be cut with the scissors, but the likes of perspex needs a saw to cut. It has many uses. We'll be using some of this to model the windows in our model later on. Paints can be bought relatively cheap. I buy all my paints from the pound shop. Uh, it can be very messy, so you need to protect your clothes and protect your workbenches also when using paints. Uh, very handy as well, you can mix your own colours with paints. The three primary colours are red, blue and yellow and from a mix of any of these colours we can create almost any colour. So for the likes if we mix red and blue together we get more of the kind of dark blue or violet shades in colour. Black and white paints are also needed so if you have black, white, red, blue and yellow paint you are well sorted to create any colour you may need for your model. Painting accessories, always use trays or cups to hold the paint, use paint in small amounts, always paint on light layers of paint at a time, never flood the model with paint. Remember to clean as you go and also protect your clothes and workbenches as well. Paper materials can be relatively cheap, they have many uses. Um, brown paper can be used to protect your workbench. Newspaper we will be using in a paper mache finish for the model in later on in the series. Very handy to keep a hold and get a stockpile of these waste materials also. Cleaning up, always clean as you go. J cloths and wet wipes in the form of like baby wipes are very handy to have near in case of spills or just general cleaning up. 